go to myishpolness forward slash youtube dot com to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. You can't just say don't do it, but you can get the facts, share them with your kids, and help them make a healthy choice. As always, it's best to give balanced, honest answers based on facts. Why do people smoke marijuana? Some may smoke it for medical reasons to help with pain. Others may smoke it recreationally. Parents might liken it to alcohol. You know how some people have a glass of wine with dinner to relax? Now, some may smoke pot for the same reason. But it's also important that your kids know that getting high can change their mood and behavior. And just like alcohol, tell your kids it's illegal to drive after you've smoked pot. I tell my kids the main reason that marijuana is illegal for those under 21 is because their brains are still developing. And marijuana can affect their concentration and memory. Smoking is, is helping a lot of people to rise their conscious vibration. It, it is coming first through their perception. And through the perception, they are learning to inculcate behaviors from the perceptions to then have a certain lifestyle. That is why some people quit from smoking to steaming, which is a vaporized form of, of having the, the marijuana. Some eat it, some have never really smoked it. So cooking it in, in, in products. A study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association investigating the effects of marijuana and tobacco on pulmonary function. Researchers followed a cohort of more than 5,000 men and women over 20 years. They wanted to see how smoking tobacco and marijuana affected lung health. What did they find? Not surprisingly, tobacco use had significant negative effects on lung function. Marijuana use, though, had none. No lung effects at all. While every state has laws dictating the use of medical marijuana, more than two-thirds of U.S. states and the District of Columbia have actually legalized it for medical treatments and more are considering bills to do the same. Yet while many people are using marijuana, the FDA has only since 2018 approved Epidiolex. Epidiolex was approved in 2018 for treating seizures associated with two rare and severe forms of epilepsy, Dravet syndrome and lennox gastric syndrome, otherwise known as LGS. So why hasn't more research been done on this herb to make it available for further medical purposes? One reason is that the US Drug Enforcement Administration considers marijuana a Schedule 1 drug, the same as heroin, LSD, and ecstasy, and likely to be abused and lacking in medical value. Because of that, researchers need a special license to study it. The DEA considered reclassifying marijuana as a Schedule 2 drug like Ritalin or Oxycodone but decided to keep it as a Schedule 1 drug. The agency did, however, agree to support additional research on marijuana and make the process easier for researchers.
For those who do not know and are wondering what are Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 drugs, Schedule 1 drug is defined as substances or chemicals which have no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Schedule 2 drugs or chemicals are substances that have a high potential for abuse and have currently accepted medical use in treatment in the United States or currently accepted medical use with severe restrictions and if abused may lead to severe psychological or physical dependence. Medical Marijuana Medical marijuana uses the marijuana plant or chemicals in it to treat diseases or conditions. It's basically the same product as recreational marijuana, but it's taken for medical purposes. The marijuana plant contains more than 100 different chemicals called cannabinoids. Each one has a different effect on the body. Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, otherwise called THC, and cannabidiol, or CBD, are the main chemicals used in medicine. THC also produces the high that people feel when they smoke marijuana or eat foods containing it. The greatest amount of evidence for the therapeutic effects of cannabis relates to its ability to reduce chronic pain, nausea and vomiting due to chemotherapy, and spasticity, tight or stiff muscles from multiple sclerosis. Cannabinoids, the active chemicals in medical marijuana, are similar to chemicals the body makes that are involved in appetite, memory, movement, and pain. Limited research suggests cannabinoids might reduce anxiety, reduce inflammation and relieve pain, control nausea and vomiting caused by cancer chemotherapy, kill cancer cells and slow the growth of tumor, relax tight muscles in people with multiple sclerosis, stimulate appetite and improve weight gain in people with cancer and AIDS. Researchers are studying whether medical marijuana can help treat a number of conditions including Alzheimer's disease, appetite loss, cancer, Crohn's disease, diseases affecting the immune system like HIV AIDS or multiple sclerosis, eating disorders such as anorexia, epilepsy, glaucoma, mental health conditions like schizophrenia and post-traumatic stress disorders, PTSD, muscle spasms, nausea, pain, seizures, wasting syndrome, otherwise called cachexia. Medical marijuana received a lot of attention a few years ago when parents said that a special form of the drug helped control seizures in their children. To take medical marijuana, you can smoke it, inhale it through a device called a vaporizer that turns it into a mist, eat it, for example, in a brownie or lollipop or even as a vegetable, apply it to your skin in a lotion, spray, oil or cream Place a few drops of a liquid under your tongue. How you decide to take it is entirely up to you. Each method works differently inside a person's body. If you smoke or vaporize cannabis, you feel the effects very quickly. If you eat it, it takes significantly longer. It can take one to two hours to experience the effects from edible products. Marijuana leaves can be chopped up and made into a salad or be added to your breakfast smoothie. 
eating raw marijuana is unlikely to get you high. Weed needs to be heated in a process called decarboxylation to activate its THC. So although raw cannabis leaves do contain some cannabinoids such as CBDA, it is still safe to eat raw marijuana leaves as a part of your daily meal. However, weed has a pretty distinctive taste and it might not suit everyone's palate. There are several reasons why using cannabis as a vegetable is a good idea. Its leaves are high in fiber which is essential for a healthy digestive system. It also provides essential amino acids and minerals including magnesium, calcium and phosphorus. And though the flowers provide the bulk of the cannabinoids and terpenes, they can be found in lower concentrations inside the leaves. Can someone be allergic to cannabis? In recent years, there has been an increasing number of cannabis allergies reported. In susceptible people, this condition can cause a range of symptoms from mild nasal irritation to potentially fatal anaphylactic shock. This condition is confusingly called cannabis fruit vegetable syndrome and is one reason why you should approach using cannabis as a vegetable with caution, at least until you know how it affects you personally. Although marijuana can be used as a vegetable, it is much more accurate to call it an herb. The word herb usually refers to the way a plant is used and can be as a flavoring in food, a medicine, or for ritual purposes. What are the side effects of medical marijuana? Side effects that have been reported derived from the different uses that are mentioned earlier. Side effects may include bloodshot eyes, depression, dizziness, fast heartbeat, hallucinations, and low blood pressure. Legal cannabis must contain 0.3% of THC or less. THC is the main psychoactive compound in cannabis that produces the high sensation. It can be consumed by smoking cannabis. The high that you experience from the THC found in marijuana can also affect judgment and coordination which could lead to accidents and injuries. When used during the teenage years, when the brain is still developing, marijuana might have an impact on IQ and mental function. Marijuana is currently legal on the state level in 29 states and in Washington DC. It is still illegal from the federal government's perspective. About 85% of Americans support legalizing medical marijuana and it is estimated that at least several million Americans currently use cannabis. Least controversial is the extract from the hemp plant known as CBD which stands for cannabidiol because this component of marijuana has little if any intoxicating properties. Marijuana itself has more than 100 active components. THC which stands for tetrahydrocannabinol is the chemical that causes the high that goes along with marijuana consumption. CBD dominant strains have little or no THC 
so patients report very little, if any, alteration in consciousness. Patients do, however, report many benefits of CBD from relieving insomnia, anxiety, spasticity, and pain to treating potentially life-threatening conditions such as epilepsy. One particular form of childhood epilepsy, called Javits syndrome, is almost impossible to control but responds dramatically to a CBD dominant strain of marijuana called Charlotte's Web. Marijuana in Ancient History Marijuana has been around for decades and is said to be used by our ancient ancestors for food, clothing, and in religious rituals. Cannabis is used in many of the world's largest religious rituals, such as the ancient Egyptians, Asaju or Norse, Assyrian, Australian, Babylonian, Bantu, Brazilian, Buddhism, Canaanite, Celtic Judaism, Chinese, Christianity, Coptic Christianity, Daga, Essenes, Etruscan, Gypsy, including Tarot, Hellenism or Greek, Hermeticism, Hinduism, Hottentot, Islam, Judaism, Kemetic Ancient Egyptian Spirituality, Mithraism, Persian, Polynesian, Pygmy, Rastafarian, Roman, Shamanic Tribal Religion, Shintoism, Sufi Islam, Tantra, Taoism, Thai, Therapeutic, Wicca, Witchcraft, Zoroastrianism, and Zulu. Hemp was used for rope and sails as well as fine linens in ancient Egypt. Hemp rope was found in the 18th dynasty tomb of Akhenaten Amenophis IV at Elemarna, including a three-ply hemp card in the hole of a stone and a large mat bound with hemp cards. In the 3rd century CE, the Roman Emperor Aurelian imposed a tax on Egyptian cannabis. Cannabis was first documented in Kemet, ancient Egypt, around 2000 BCE to treat sword eyes and cataract. According to Diodorus Siculus, a Sicilian Greek historian who lived from 90 to 21 BCE, Egyptian women used cannabis as a medication to relieve sorrow and bad humor. Cannabis is mentioned as a medication in the following ancient Egyptian medical texts. Ramesium III, Papyrus, 1700 BCE. Ebers Papyrus, 1600 BCE. The Berlin Papyrus, 1300 BCE. And the Chester BT6 
Papyrus, 1300 BCE. The Ebers Papyrus is the oldest known complete medical textbook in existence. Most scholars believe that it is a copy of a much earlier text, probably from around 3100 BCE. According to formula number 821, translation of the Matic script, otherwise called the People's Script, cannabis is pounded in honey and administered as a contraction into a woman's vagina. The 1907 Merck Index, page 132, lists emulsions of cannabis seed to treat the effects of gonorrhea. The 1909 King's American Dispensatory lists hemp seed infusion for use in after pains and in the bearing down sensation accompanying prolapsus uteri. The 1927 U.S. Dispensatory lists hemp seed oil for inflammations of the mucous membrane. Also in the Ebers papyrus, a mixture of cannabis and carob was used as an enema or combined with other ingredients for use as a pulses. The Ramses III papyrus provides a prescription for cannabis use in the treatment of glaucoma. A Treatment for the Eyes Celery and cannabis is ground and left in the dew overnight. Both eyes of the patient are to be washed with it in the morning. Cannabis pollen was found on the mummy of Ramses II, 19th dynasty. Initially, scholars debated as to whether the cannabis pollen was ancient or modern contamination. Additional research showed cannabis pollen in all known royal mummies. There were no known ancient Egyptian mummies that were wrapped in hemp cloth. The intoxicating properties of cannabis were virtually unknown among Europeans other than among witches until the 18th century 1700s when travelers to Egypt discovered the herb. European witches knew of cannabis from antiquity when cannabis was one of the most commonly used medications among Celts and Norse. The smoke eaters at the temple of Thebes used cannabis incense for mortality rituals. According to the book entitled The Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Herra, the DEA's own conservative administrative law judge, Francis Young, after taking medical testimony for 15 days and reviewing hundreds of DEA and IDA documents positioned against the evidence introduced by marijuana reform activists concluded in September 1988 that marijuana is one of the safest therapeutically active substances known to man. End quote. About 8000 BC, in an ancient village in Taiwan, the Taiwanese used hemp fibers to spin into their fabrics thus no longer relying on animal skin for clothing. Further evidence has been found suggesting that these ancient people also used marijuana to manufacture shoes due to its sturdy nature, wide availability and cheaper price point than silk. As time progressed, so did the usage of cannabis, soon being used in more fields than simply garment making. 
in 4000 BC, for example, in a Chinese village called Panpao, archaeologists found evidence that hemp was considered to be one of the five grains for China and thus a major food crop. Its first recorded medical use then occurred in the earliest book recording Chinese medicinal practices, the Pentizo Ching, in around 2737 BC, in which hemp was recognized for its ability to treat over 100 medical issues, including gout, malaria, and rheumatism. Some time afterwards, the medicinal use of marijuana also began to feature heavily in Hindu religious text. In the Vedas, for example, written between 2000 BC and 1400 BC, cannabis was described as a source of happiness, a joy giver and bringer of freedom that was compassionately given to humans by the gods to relieve them from anxiety and help them achieve delight as well as fearlessness. Smoked daily at devotional services and during religious rituals around the same time, cannabis was also used for its medicinal properties, various parts of the plant being used to treat a wide variety of issues from epilepsy to rabies, anxiety and even bacterial infections such as bronchitis. Also noteworthy during this period is its usage by the ancient Egyptians with Ebers papyrus in particular from 1550 BC detailing its usage for treating inflammation. A little later on during the Greek and Roman period around 450 to 200 BC cannabis was widely prescribed to soothe pain from toothaches and earaches with Roman women among the elite circles reportedly using it to alleviate labor pains. Uses of Medical Marijuana It is said that marijuana has several medicinal uses, such as helps release nausea and vomiting in some chemotherapy patients. Marijuana is also used to manage weight loss and can be used to treat glaucoma. Stimulates appetite and weight gain in AIDS, cancer and anorexia nervosa patients. Decreases spasticity associated with multiple sclerosis. Could help with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Relieves all symptoms associated with spinal cord injury in some patients. Also help with epilepsy. May help treat bladder pain syndrome. Reduces headaches and migraine attacks in some patients. could help with osteoarthritis by preventing cartilage breakdown, could relieve rheumatoid arthritis pain and stop its progress, can help with all symptoms associated with fibromyalgia. Could help with osteoporosis by stimulating bone formation. Could prevent degenerative disc disease. Could improve symptoms associated with dystonia up to 50%. Could weaken the progression of Huntington's disease. Helps with the movement disorders associated with Parkinson's disease and movement disorders caused by the use of its traditional medications. Helps with Tourette's syndrome. 
can help increase libido both in males and females. Acts as a bronchodilator in asthma patients. Can lower arterial blood pressure in patients with hypertension. Can reduce anxiety. Can be an effective antidepressant. Can help with sleep disorders by effectively improving sleep quality. Can help eliminate nightmares associated with PTSD. Can be used to control the abuse of more harmful drugs. CBD is a potent antipsychotic for schizophrenia patients. Could help with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Could help with inflammatory skin diseases. Can help with irritable bowel syndrome. Can improve symptoms of inflammatory bowel diseases. Can help with diseases of the liver. Could help weight loss in obesity. Could potentially prevent diabetes. Can also kill brain tumors. Could inhibit tumor growth in breast cancers. Could inhibit tumor growth in melanoma. Could help prevent bladder cancer. Marijuana could help kill leukemia cells. May help treat lung cancer. Could treat pancreatic cancer. Could treat colon cancer. Can stop the spread of prostate cancer. Can help with obsessive compulsive disorder. Could help with atherosclerosis. Could aid neurogenesis. Can prevent brain damage after strokes and trauma. Can improve concentration, sleep, and reduce impulsivity in ADHD patients. Could protect the brain from stress. Could help with chronic heart failure. Could help with malaria. THC reduces the infectivity of the herpes virus. And last but not least, it is said to be used for pain control. While marijuana isn't strong enough for severe pain, for example, post-surgical pain or broken bone, it is quite effective for the chronic pain that plagues millions of people, especially as they age. Here goes a bonus tip. Marijuana overdose is virtually impossible. According to a study done in 2015 that looked at the ratio between the overdose benchmark and the estimated human intake of various drugs found that you would have to take more than 10,000 times the estimated human intake to overdose and marijuana. Which is why you probably never heard of anyone dying from a marijuana overdose. Bonus tip number two. 
the cannabinoid also called CBD can help you stop smoking cigarettes. In 2013 research found that when smokers who wish to stop smoking use a CBD inhaler whenever they feel the urge to smoke reduced the number of cigarettes they smoked by 40%. We have come to the end of part one in this marijuana series. Thanks to every one of you for tuning in and for more information visit herbonaut.com that's h-e-r-b-o-n-a-u-t dot com. Be sure to like, share and subscribe for the upcoming videos in the marijuana series. With that being said my last words to you are S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N Sovereign Be sovereign Read everything Study everything Know everything And choose for yourself Ashe Peace